All right, guys, welcome. Hi, Dorothy. Um, my name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. And I'll give you the quick agenda for the day. Um, there's some familiar faces I see in the list and some people that it's their first time. So if it's familiar and you're just here for the Q&A, you can, you, can, you can probably just chill for a little bit and, and get ready with the questions on the tail end. If you're new, uh, we're going to take you through like a little tour of the software, kind of big picture what we do. Uh, I'm going to come back in and, and do a little bit of a rant, and then we're going to get into the best part of the whole thing, which is your questions. Uh, so you can get those ready, and it could be anything art or photography ph photography, photography related, uh, and we would love to get into it. Uh, what's preventing you from taking the next step? What are you struggling with? Uh, what would you like to know more about? Any questions about what we do? Um, any questions about live art shows or merchandise or any of the topics uh, that we cover all the time? I can't wait to start answering those. So for now, I'll turn it over to Taylor, and then I will be back in just a few minutes. All right, everybody, welcome to today's session. My name's Taylor. I'm on the marketing team at Art Storefronts. One of the people putting together our many resources and consulting and mentoring our members on a regular basis in workshops like these. Today's session is for non-members, so this is a free, wide open session, and how it's a little bit different than what you get as a member. Our member workshops, which we hold five times a week at this point on various topics, are largely tactical, right? So it's giving uh, our members ongoing advice, tweaks to their strategy, checking in with them, seeing how far they've gotten since we last spoke, and uh, making sure their business is always growing. By contrast, today will be largely about what we call unclogging the drain. Before you're even ready for tactical or strategic advice, you need to get the big thing out of the way. And we found through these non-member workshops that uh, most artists and photographers out there have something. They have a big thing in their way. It can be a mindset problem, some kind of self-limiting belief that if you just simply do away with it, the path becomes clear. Or it could be something more practical, like uh, not, not doing something that you really need to be doing. Whatever it is, we're going to find out about it today and fix it for you. Before we get into all that good stuff, uh, I have two segments for you up top here, opening remarks. The first one, stuff you need to know about this workshop, how it works. The second, a little bit of an overview on art storefronts, uh, just to get some context, set the stage, you know, who we are and what we do. First up, the need to know information about today's workshop. To get in line to chat with us, right? To, to get unmuted and start to uh, get some help, you need to use the raise hand button in Zoom. So at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see the participants button. You're gonna hit that and that'll open this on the right hand side where you'll find the blue raise hand button. You hit that and that will do it, raise hand. You'll see up here, your name will show the, the blue raise hand button. That's the system we use. We go top to bottom, uh, unmuting everyone that has their hand raised and uh, helping them out. So if you have a question up front, you know you wanna talk to us, you can do that right now and get early in line so you'll be one of the first people to get some help today. If something comes up later and you, you don't have a question yet, but something comes to mind, you can always do it later in the session too. The second thing you need to know is that we have a page that we call the show notes. And that's where we aggregate all of the links to resources that come up today. So if uh, one of us says we have a really good video about that, or we say we actually have a podcast episode that would help you out, you don't need to be hunting around for that in the moment. We're doing that for you. We're collecting it all. Here's what the page looks like. We're gonna send this to you after today's session ends. We're gonna email it to you. So you'll find the replay at the top, Right? So if you have to leave early or you arrived late, uh, or even if you missed it altogether, uh, you can always catch up with the replay here. And then this is the show notes section I was talking about. All the links will be there, everything that came up. So you'll have that. Don't worry about looking anything up in the moment. We're taking care of it. Uh, I should also mention on this page while you're here, there are a couple of request a demo buttons. Those are your go-to spots for either signing up if you just want to get going or reaching out to us, having a more in-depth chat about our features and our pricing and stuff like that. That's how you start those conversations. If you just wanna do your research and uh, get to know us, see if there's a good fit, you hit the request the demo button, you fill out the form and we'll get in touch. That's how you do that. Okay, second segment today, uh, what even is Art Storefronts, okay? So here is the very quick overview. 
And like I said, the demo is where they go in depth. They'll do an hour for you. They'll answer as many questions as you have. But today, I don't know how many people here already know everything about us, nothing about us. So I'll just go right down the middle and do a very quick overview. Um, there are two halves to art storefronts. There is the website software, right? So that is the art selling website. And then there's the marketing program, and that is really the fuel for that website engine. The, the website could be fantastic. We believe it's the best website software for artists ever designed. We really believe that, and I'll show you why in a moment. However, all of the power of that website is meaningless if there's no one on it. So the marketing program is what completes the whole membership. Uh, I'll show you both halves now, starting with the website. There are hundreds of features, hundreds of features. It is very difficult to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with this software. So I think I will just show you uh, what's really most important, right? The product page. At the end of the day, everything on your website is designed around getting people here to the product page where then they can check out and buy your artwork. So what is the big deal with these product pages? Um, to explain that, let's just clarify that I'm showing you an artwork product page today. That's the important one. We also have what we call standard product pages, and that's where you can sell anything. If you have ceramics, jewelry, uh, clothing, you can sell all of those product types on art storefronts. It does not need to be solely wall art. But I wanna show you the wall art product page because there's an important thing to uh, get straight here. These pages are set up specifically to sell wall art. That's in contrast to a website provider like Squarespace that has to have their product pages work for all product types, whether you're selling artwork or toilet paper or electric scooters, right? It works for everything, which creates a master of none situation when it comes to their features. They have not considered artwork in particular, so they have not addressed the problems, the challenges with selling artwork online like we have. The big deal with selling artwork online is that there is a lot of friction. It is not a product like toilet paper or electric scooters where you want what it does and you find the one that you like and you buy it. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Buying art is an emotional journey. You fall in love with the work. You get to know the artist through their emails and their social media posts. You save up for it. Uh, eventually you get the wall space open, but even then you have questions like how, which piece should I select and how is it going to look with my uh, wall paint color? How is it going to work with the other uh, pieces of artwork in my collection? Will my spouse like it? How do I show it to them in the best way? Um, what are the media types available? I've never heard of this word acrylic. Is that worth looking into? Uh, what size is going to work for my space? I don't want it to look too small or of course too big. Uh, all of these questions are where you lose sales. People have those questions. Your website does not answer them and they never get it answered. They leave. Uh, you cannot rely on people reaching out to you actively to ask these questions right? Your website needs to passively answer them for you all the time. Whenever that question comes up, whichever one it is, your website comes in and says, oh, here you go. Got the help for you right here. Problem solved. Keep going. Keep making the purchase, right? That is what maximizes art sales. Let's start by just looking at the layout of the page. Image on the left, buying options on the right. Not below, not somewhere down the page you need to scroll to find. Everything is uh, visible on one screen, and it's all expanded. There's not drop downs. Everything is image based. This is like the express lane to checking out artwork online. Beyond that, you can offer every version of an image side by side. The open edition prints are right here. With one click, you can start shopping the limited edition prints, signed and numbered, highest quality, that sort of thing. With another click, you're over to the original version of that image. If the original is available, uh, you could step up and buy it right here. Finally, the multi panel. This is where you break up a single image into three prints, right? So it's a huge upsell. You turn one print sale into three, very sleek and modern presentation. I love that one. If you don't offer one of these media types, like you're a photographer, so you don't have originals, uh, you wouldn't have this tab on your website. This is just showing all the possible options, but you'll set it up to whatever you actually offer. So if you don't have limited editions, it's gone. It's not on your actual site. Uh, it adapts to what you actually sell. Within these, let's look at the open edition prints. Now, the big challenge there is explaining the media types. The average art consumer does not know terms like uh, canvas gallery wrap, G-clay print, uh, metal, acrylic. They don't know what these look like. They don't know what they are. So it becomes difficult to make a smart decision um, until they do. 
So the website's job is to educate them very quickly and visually. So here's how we've done that. When you click on one of the media types, the uh, preview over on the left-hand side uh, adapts in a subtle way. So this adds a little bit of virtual depth to this image because we selected the canvas option. That clues people in, oh, this is that traditional thick gallery look. Beyond that, maybe they don't know what metal is, uh, you can hover on these tool tips here, the little question marks, and then you can launch a video. These are custom videos we've produced just for our members that show every angle of these media types and summarize the benefits. They're about 15 seconds long and they instantly create that connection of, oh, that is what I want. Very powerful. Um, Beyond those buying tools, you have the visualization tools. This is for questions like, uh, I love the piece, I know I want it on metal, I'm just not sure if it's really gonna look good in my space or uh, how large I should buy. That's where the visualization tools come in. Wall preview is the, uh, the starter there. Uh, you can select a room type and you can get going very quickly, a good representation of uh, what size you need. All right, so let's step it up, the 30, that looks good, the 32 looks even better, right? You're stepping it in. We've got wall color here. These aren't random, these are the top selling uh, paint colors from last year from Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams. So there's a high likelihood your buyers will actually find their real wall color right in here. Very simple, very fast. Uh, so this helps clear up some of those questions, but we take it to the next level with live room preview. You can see the button here and also on the product page right here, live preview. AR. This is an augmented reality tool that allows people to use their mobile or tablet device to uh, visualize the artwork on their actual wall, not a virtual space, not a hypothetical wall, their actual wall space. So you can see in this video here, it projects it onto their wall. They can start to select the sizing and see how everything looks. They can move it around the wall space. And now there is no translation problem, right? It is not close to their wall color or whatever. It is their real actual space. The most powerful part of this feature, because other websites have this type of functionality via an app. Ours works in the web browser. There is no downloading and installing an app. They're right in the checkout process. They pop open this tool. It works on their phone. They close the tool once they're happy and they continue checking out. That is the game changing part of it. So overall, I think that does a good job of summarizing uh, a few of the features of the product page here, but that is your, your drop in the bucket overview. It goes on and on. Art Buyer AI recognizes and informs you when a likely collector has visited your site. Uh, we have tools that allow you to fire off very quick emails to welcome personally new subscribers, to uh, reach out when someone has added something to their cart but not checked out, right? Give you a shot to close that sale. The features really go on and on, QR codes, selling sheets. Um, I couldn't possibly summarize it today. Request a demo if you wanna see a little bit more. Um, but that is the engine. The, the Ferrari in your driveway, let's talk about the fuel that goes in it, the marketing program. Uh, of course, when it comes to artists, you guys do not want to be marketing. I understand that completely. You want to be creating the work and selling it. That's it. But the in-between step is very necessary and it is marketing. So let's talk about how we make that process as painless as possible while still getting you uh, doing the work that you must do to grow a small business. The centerpiece to our marketing program, where it all comes back to, is the art marketing calendar. That is the core piece. Everything else just supports this. The marketing calendar is a daily plan that tells you exactly what to do every single day of the year. It provides you with all the email language you'll need to pull off sales, a Black Friday sale, something like that. And it gives you the advice that you need to turn your casual followers into leads, that's people on your email list, your leads into first time buyers and your buyers into lifelong repeat collectors. We walk you through it on a daily basis. It is not overwhelming. It is not a knowledge base where you need to watch 55 videos and then just implement what they said. All you need to do is look at today. Uh, we're on Wednesday. What do they say to do? I have three tasks to complete. It should take me about 30 minutes. Let's do it. Three tasks, one, two, three, knocked it out. You have done what you need to do for your business today. It's that simple. 
let's look at what this thing is. So uh, up top, attention newbies. This is a section with four steps we want our new members to complete before they get down to the full calendar. Uh, some highlights here, we have a workshop every Wednesday where our marketing team will look at your new Art Storefronts website, go through the major pages, and make sure that it's set up according to best practices from a marketing point of view, right? So before you even launch, you make sure you're gonna be closing every possible sale. Uh, we also have a campaign, a 14-day campaign that we want all new members to execute. It's, it's just like the calendar. It tells you what to do day by day. Post this message on Facebook and post this message on Instagram and send this email. Very simple to follow. And that uh, campaign is themed around celebrating your new website in a way that will generate you some leads and maybe some sales too right up top. So we ask everyone to do that before getting into the calendar with everyone else. Below the newbie section, we have the live workshop schedule that has uh, your look at what's coming up this week, when you can join us in Zoom in our members only workshops. We have some announcements that go here. We have a strategic overview, step three. This section is written by our CEO and our director of marketing. And in it, they give you their advice, what they would do if they were running your business this month, where your head should be at, right? So the, the calendar below is your daily bit by bit look. This section is the high level overview, what you should be thinking about your major goals for the month. And then you have the calendar itself. You can see it's day by day. Um, we have a bit of hierarchy here where we put the most important tasks in red and everything else in black. Nothing goes on here that's not important to do, right? So the black tasks are not unimportant. It's just that if you have very limited time, uh, you have family obligations, a part or full-time job, and you can't get to the entire calendar, no problem, uh, do the red stuff first. And then if you have extra time, do the black tasks. Uh, most people have no problem completing 75% uh, or more of the calendar though. It's not a huge obligation because we do so much of the work upfront for you in terms of writing the subject lines you should be sending and giving you lots of examples whenever anything uh, needs to be created. Uh, it's day by day. You've got the major task of the day, and then you've got go to tasks, a button that jumps you down the page to the full explanation of the day. It'll give you an objective for the day and then break down uh, what you need to be doing into tasks. One, two, three, do these things. Very easy to follow. Um, everything else, like I said, supports this system. So our workshops in general are supporting our members as they're following this calendar. Uh, you check in with us, you say, I did the Saturday Sunday task and I got these results. What can I do to boost them even further? Or uh, I see next week I need to be doing this, but I don't have my head around it fully yet. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit more about it? All that sort of stuff. We make sure our members are moving together through the calendar all at the same time. When we do some Something new, right? So we've recently started doing these live art shows. We have a playbook on how to execute a live art show from home. And our members are having some huge successes with this, selling dozens of pieces from home on Instagram or Facebook Live. Um, that is an example of something where after everyone does this together, we have hundreds, maybe even a thousand people running these live shows simultaneously. Then the following week, we have uh, six or seven or eight of the people that had the most success with that strategy come on a live workshop for our members and just talk through what they did. We hear out how did they address it specifically? Was there anything that was a little different than anyone else? How did they see that success? Um, that way all of the members can hear what's working from the other members and then we go ahead and update all of our playbooks with the new learnings. So there is nothing in this program that is static, that is a dead uh, blog post style article from six years ago that may or may not be relevant today. We are updating these things on a weekly basis, checking in with our members. Uh, if enough people report that this part didn't work for them, it didn't really seem to do anything, it gets pulled out, right? We are live adjusting all of our resources so that when you join in, you get the learnings of the past several years just baked into everything. So I've talked a lot about how our members interact with us, get mentorship and consulting from us via the workshops, but we also have a venue for them to get help from each other when they need to talk shop or just get input from a whole bunch of artists really quick on a topic like, you know, how do you address shipping? How do you go about uh, tax, some kind of tax situation? All that sort of stuff. The Small Wins Facebook group is the place for that. It's private just for our members, and that is where they go to ask for help, share their, their small wins as we call it, you know, all the little successes that stack up into a successful business. Uh, does anyone know how to patent or copyright a design? Get some help from our members on that. 
So this is the place to go uh, when you need to uh, quickly poll a huge group of people uh, that, that have gotten further than you, right? That already have gotten where you wanna go uh, and have the learnings, the quick learnings that they can summarize for you. Between all of these resources that all fall back on the calendar, you have a marketing system that keeps you in line, that keeps you moving, that does not simply present you with 1,000 hours of content and asks you to explore it at your own pace, figure out for yourself which things you should be following and which things you should ignore. Uh-uh. Uh this is about the calendar. It's about uh, cutting out all the time you waste thinking about what you should and shouldn't be doing. That is the time saver uh, here, the big game changer. You no longer need to think about all the possible things. We've already done that. We've highlighted what you should be doing, the best return on your time. All right, that is my uh, rant. I was, I was gonna say short rant, I know it wasn't short, but it's very difficult to compress everything we have going on into uh, a format like this. So thanks for listening. Uh, again, the website is your engine. The marketing program is the fuel for that engine. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the consulting. Uh, I think we're all on the same page now, so let's do that drain unclogging I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I'll turn it over to our hosts. All right, thank you, Taylor. So, I see some of you guys are asking questions already. Wonderful, you're in the queue. We start at the top, we move down to the bottom. Uh, you can use the chat too. So I'll rant for a little bit and then we'll get into the questions. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover them and I'll then use, including Facebook, wherever you're watching. Big picture, lofty goal. What are we here to do? Solve the starving artist problem. And yes, artists, photographers, same thing. People get hung up on that a little bit. Um, and, and really, like as we've sort of gotten better as a company and articulated things a little bit cleaner, it's number one, solve the starving artist problem. Number two, you know, which obviously it's a huge audacious goal. Number two, our goal is to put our customers, potential customers, on the path to a six figure a year plus art business. Another lofty goal that might be higher than some of you uh, are aiming for, but the path is the path, right? You decide where you get off. And we find that there's sort of five pillars that are that are underpinning the the path towards a six figure a year art business. And four of them are really substantive. The first one is the most important and it's called unclogging the drain. And what do we mean by that? Before you can even get working on the four things that would cut you on the path, you need to get the crap that's stuck in your drain that's preventing any of those things from going and down and, and, and actually taking substantive steps on your business. These are things like, I'll just get started when my website's perfect. Know any artists that are perfectionists at all? Much, right? Like, massive problem in the art community and photography community, the perfectionism. Also procrastination, right? Just constantly kicking the marketing tasks down the road or not actually working on driving traffic or not uh, uh, doing the things that you need to be doing to actually physically grow the business. And underpinning those things are a myriad of other nonsense. Things like you don't think art sells online or things like you'll sell tremendously well once you find that email list, that mythological email list of high net worth individuals, if you just had access to it, or that there's some website in which you can upload your work, do nothing else, and sell a ton of art. Also doesn't exist. Uh, things like you would sell fine if you just knew what the sizes were or you just needed to get your work photographed or the myriad of just nonsensical things that somehow get into artists and photographers' minds that literally prevent them from taking any substantive steps to move the business forward. And you see this time and time again. So what will actually happen today on this call is rather than getting into tactical questions about email marketing or Facebook ads or analytics or, or um, Facebook and Instagram strategies are going live, the majority of the questions will be about the nonsensical stuff that's stuck in your drain. My job is to be a plumber and get that out of your drain. That's number one. So pillar number one. Um, number two, and I gotta get through my notes because for some reason I can't remember. Um, it's been a long weekend. Number two is understanding the business model. And this is a big one that's like literally gotten a significant set of teeth post COVID, right? And it's DTC or die, okay? Direct to consumer or die. An artist, a photographer, needs to be selling directly to their customers. They need to be keeping all of the personal information on those customers such that you can market to them in perpetuity. The average collector, according to Wyland, his book, great book, by the way. Um, I think it's, what is this book? I have it down here somewhere. I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll show it later. An average collector for him buys six to nine pieces over the course of, the, of his life. So 
your job is to get as many of those collectors as possible. If you're not selling direct, you don't have the contact information. Etsy's not giving it to you. Redbubble's not giving it to you. Saatchi, Fine Art America, um, you, you know, you don't get that information. So, you know, I, I use the line, you don't have to get a whole lot right to be successful as an artist or a photographer, but you can't get the big things wrong. This is a big one. If you're not selling direct to consumer, if you are not building up a list, an email list, building up attention that you own, you're in trouble. Like, you know, the galleries, the shows getting canceled, um, what we've all just been through in COVID, I think fundamentally underscores how significant of a problem this can be. So that's a critically important one, understanding the business model. Number three is the secret to effective marketing. Is there a secret? Yes, there is. There's no damn secret, actually. There's nothing. It's focusing on the highest ROI marketing activities, okay? How do I know these things? I've been a marketer my whole life. I'm good at it, but more importantly than that, I've got 4,300 customers on this platform all selling various degrees of art. I look at the ones that are selling the best. I can tell you what's working and what's not. So it's as much important as much important as important focusing on the highest roi stuff is it is ignoring all the nonsense that doesn't work seo how much time should you spend on it approximately zero okay it's not going to work marketing on pinterest how much time you should spend on that approximately zero i've never seen anyone sell any significant amount of art so it's just as much what you focus on is what you ignore two parts to that the second is doing it consistently all year long no one ever does that Everyone always gets hot and bothered. This is going to be my year. I'm going to kill it. This is great. You start marketing for two months. You don't get the results you were looking for, and you quit for six. Anyone, anyone on this call ever done that? Like, everyone does that. You have to stay at it consistently, and that's it. And so we obviously have some things built in to help with that. Number four is the inputs. Okay, I love this one. Combination pillar stated one way is you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. I think that's profoundly possible. No, I'm not suggesting you get rid of your friends. What I'm suggesting is that for whatever reason, the advice out there on the interwebs, the advice out there with, with sometimes friends and family to artists and photographers is almost always nonsense. And it almost always comes from people that have never sold any art or photography. Stated another way, if you turned off the news, all of it, you didn't read the paper, you didn't watch the TV, you didn't listen to the radio, none of it, a couple of weeks go by and all of a sudden you're a happier human being. You love your neighbor more. You don't care about, you, you actually care about the country. You think this is a great world that we live in. And it's like, for whatever reason, you know, the, the news brings it home, right? Like you hear that and you're like, you're so, that's so true. That's so right. Like if you're not bombarded with that stuff, but for whatever reason, artists and photographers are constantly surrounded with people that are bombarding them with nonsense. And, it, and it, I, I just, I talk to hundreds of you guys a week and I just see it time and time again. So the input's number four. Number five, perspective on how long it takes uh, I always quote the Steve Jobs line, it takes three to five years to build anything of value online, period, full stop. So thinking that you're going to jump into this and you're going to be selling $100,000 a year in month six, uh, you just got a brand new silver Mercedes in the driveway is also nonsense, right? When you calibrate your mind to how long it's going to take for you to build this new online venture, or on online, offline, hybrid venture, then you're in a good place. But if you think it's gonna get done in a year, you're gonna be impatient, you're not gonna be working consistently on your marketing, you're not gonna get there. So those are the five pillars that underpin getting on the path towards a six figure a year plus business. Now, are all of our customers at $100,000 a year plus? Absolutely not. No, they are not. But we've got a quite a few that are. We've got quite a few that are pushing you know, the high six figures. And we've got a whole bunch that just sold their first piece last week, even to some that haven't sold anything yet. But they're on the path, they're doing the right things, they have the perspective of how long it takes, and they're working on their marketing. So I'm confident that's, that's as good a shot as you can get in today's day and age. So I see some questions in the chat. I'm gonna start with the raised hands, then I'll go to the chat, and then I'll come back, um, and we'll get into all of them. So Cam, you're first. What's your question, Cam? Hi, Patrick, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, basically, I wanted to know have your opinion on my marketing strategy. Okay. I've been I, I launched my first uh, photography print collection online mm -hmm. like a week ago. Okay. And the way I want to go with it for the the future years is do like four collections a year. Mm -hmm. So my shop would be open for like four times a year, and then it would be closed, like the other okay. times. And my goal with that would be to create a hype for the next collection. So people know like right now it's closed, but I really want to get the next collection. So when it goes live for like maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. they want to buy it because they know it's going to get like either sold out or it's going to, it's going to be closed, you know? Yeah. 
So I'm, I want to know if this is a good strategy or if, if I should better like uh, keep my store open year round and do like promotions and stuff or keep it like really like pop up shop, you know, mm -hmm. like four collections a year. Uh, right now I have six pictures on sale, a 25 edition of them, of each of them. So it's like a, like 150 pictures total. Okay. And the shop I'm keeping open for like maybe two weeks. So there's one week left and I'm not selling out everything, but I am acting like if I am selling out everything. Okay. okay. So like, let's, I have like one picture right now that I told my, my Instagram followers that it's sold out, mm -hmm. even if it's not, because mm -hmm. I want them to think it's selling like very fast. Mm -hmm. So the next collections, they'd be like, oh man, like I really want to get on this one because it's, it's sold out super, pretty fast last, last time. Mm -hmm. So that's how I go about it, but I really don't know like if it's any good or. Oh, I, I, lo I love this because I can come at this one a whole bunch of different ways. Um, gonna give you a couple of different opinions, okay? One, um, and, and I'll and I'll start backwards. My experience on false scarcity, okay? And so when I mean scarcity, um, the scarcity is it's sold out, right? It's sold out. Yeah. You can't get it anymore, so it creates the FOMO. When you do it and it's not real, people can smell it they can just smell it. It's sort of like, okay, this is a little bit tawdry of an example, okay? But when you're a guy, okay, and you're single, and you're out like at a bar with your mates trying to meet women, the women know that you're single. Then, the minute you get a, a girlfriend, it's all of a sudden like, before, you couldn't even get girls to talk to you. Now you have a girlfriend, and all the girls are like willing to talk to you. I don't know what phenomenon that is, whether it's pheromones or something or what, but it's the same kind of thing. When you're telling me that it's sold out, and, I, and, 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 and it's not sold out, I know you're full of it. It's not gonna work. I would just, from experience, I wouldn't do it that way. That's number one. Number two, oh, yeah. I'm gonna rent you a building, Cam, and it's gonna be Main Street USA. And you know, you're gonna keep the store open for a week, four times a year, and expect to make money doing that. I don't think it's gonna be a good way to do it. Don't think it's gonna be a good way to do it. Now, that being said, you could certainly try it if the stuff doesn't sell out, then you got nothing to worry about. It didn't work, right? What I, would, what I would strongly encourage you to do, though, is the following. The whole world has changed right now, okay? COVID has accelerated things, technologically speaking, in a fashion I've never even seen before. The future of selling art and photography online is going to be massively underpinned by selling directly via live broadcasts on the socials. It's gonna be doing flash sales on the socials. It's gonna be doing one-on-one -on -one in-person selling. Uh, on the various different video platforms. The number one way to sell art, trick question, what is it? It's face to face, person to person. Problem is, there's only 24 hours a day. We are geographically fixed to this earth. So we have to have a website that can sell all those times that we can't. This live video thing, okay, what we're doing right now is the step in between. So what I would do is I would keep the store open all year long. I would have high prices and I would constantly be having live art shows, flash sales, uh, uh, and, and the like, and I would attempt to sell that way. That would be my advice. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. It's a good question. Okay, Susan, you are up next. Susan, go ahead. Uh, Su Susan Granovitz. Here I am, hey. I'm here. Hi, um, couple of questions. Uh, is it mandatory to do festivals or fairs? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, I okay. think like, you know, in a pre-COVID world, we loved the, the festivals and fairs, especially if you do it right. And we, we have some really good content on how to best do it right, how to use the fishbowl, how to, how to, how to gather right. email addresses as a result, how to, how to email them after the fact, follow up, do all those sorts of things. But the problem is, is that in the world that we live in right now, like, Let's say the festivals open back up next month. The attendance, right. the, the attendance is just not going to be wh where it was at for a couple of years. People are going to be too gun shy right. on the COVID thing. So I don't think it's the highest ROI use of activity. I would, I would defer sort of the same thing I said on 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 the last one. Like the results that we're seeing with these live art shows, um, and 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 really, it's just a live video broadcast. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter if you do it. You have no social following, you're just getting started, it's complete crickets, and then you email it to your list after the fact. It doesn't matter if you have a potential buyer that's interested in asking you a question on Instagram and sent you a DM, and I said, Susan, 
I'd love to show you what this work looks like. Would you love to jump on like a messenger chat or uh, uh, if you have an iPhone, we can do whatever, what is it called on iPhone? I always forget, FaceTime maybe. Uh, a FaceTime chat or any which way you like it on up to when you get good at it, you get comfortable at it, you get good at merchandising, um, showing off the pieces, talking about it, talking about the inspiration, talking about the various different sizes and media types and quoting price. Then you start having bigger events online where you hype it up for like a week and a half, um, you email your list, you really ha hammer it hard, and then you go through all the pieces uh, from flash sales. I've never seen any level of success from these in my entire life in the art career, not even close. We've got people that are coming on board that have never sold anything, and on their first show, they're selling like four to five to six pieces. And it's just amazing. It's amazing. I mean, partially, it's the shiny new object, and so there's an arbitrage in the sense that it's so brand new, people really like it. But even bigger than that, it's just people love connecting with the artist. People love purchasing directly from the artist. It's real. And it just, it just offers an incredible opportunity. And if I looked at, sorry, I'm going long-winded on this one. If I looked at over here, option A, load my car up, pay for the booth fee, okay? Load my car up, schlep everything down there, set right. up my booth on my feet for eight hours a day. After I'm on my feet for eight hours a day, eating crappy meals, staying in a hotel, doing it maybe two days in a row, then coming back to my house, I'm exhausted, maybe Tuesday I'm getting back to normal again. Versus, uh, grab this, grab a piece, hit go live, talk about that art for a few minutes, turn it off, and do six in a weekend. It didn't cost you anything. You didn't have to go anywhere. You didn't have to load the car up. You didn't have to do the booth fees. You didn't have to be on your feet. And you right. have the ability to reach more people. Like, what? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That, I was that, on a I'm sold on that. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm totally sold on that. Okay. My question to you, mm -hmm. my instinct is and always has been, um, that I want to sell prints, mm -hmm. uh, not 100% um, originals. Yeah. I mean, if I sell originals, do I have to wrap them and ship them? And if I sell prints, do you have uh, someone I can connect to? We do, to, yeah. yeah. To see how, can I send them a, a piece of photograph and see what the print comes back like? You can. You can indeed. So a couple of things. One, on the originals, we actually have this new feature. It's a genie on a magic carpet that shows up at your door, boxes it up, ships it, and sends it off. Just kidding. No. You have to ship the originals. There's no getting around that. You're going to have to do that, okay? okay. There's, there's, no, there's no hack for that one. Um, <laughs> on the prints, yeah. I mean, ultimately, two things. One, all we care about is that our customers are successful. So any, any blend of original, limited edition, open edition, or, you know, um, prints, embellished prints that you want to sell, if it's working, we're, we're all for it. We okay. integrate with two print partners in the United States. On the West Coast, it's Bay Photo. On the East Coast, it's a company called Graphic Dimension. Uh, they're wait, just wait, about, wait, wait. Yep. Graphic and what? Graphic Dimension and Bay Photo. Okay, where where is uh where's graphic dimension? I think they're in Georgia. I think Georgia, okay. North Carolina, something something like that. Look, the reality okay. is they have they have every printer, every ink, every media type imaginable. The most important thing is that there is there is no ROI for artists or photographers, sadly, in today's day and age. Uh, printing and driving yeah. to the printer and boxing and shipping. No. That is all right. time you are not spending on your marketing. And so we really discourage the practice. You can certainly do it if you want to. We don't we don't force anything. Um, but yes, so the the P, So I call. I send Bay Photo a photograph. And you can you can use ship it to my customer. Yeah. So what happens is is the order will come in on your website. Um, yeah. The printer will get paid. You will get paid. The printer will box it up, ship it, send it off. Um, they will put a sticker on the box that includes your branding if you so desire, and you don't uh -huh. have to you don't have to touch a thing, not a thing. Perfect. Okay. Um, now getting can i take the photograph on my iphone must it be a special iphone do i need to buy a special camera so we so what you can see is april oh it says art store friends is putting um links into the chat and what we always put in there is there's one called the show notes and don't worry we're going to email yeah. it to you after all of the links will be in there so two things one if you want to just place a print order to see what our quality is, we have this site uh, that you can use, which is asfprints.com. That will be in the show notes. That's number one. Number two, we have a, it's one of the cool things about our, um, our community. We have a guy who just made his living for the last 15 years 
doing nothing but photography uh, for you know people that paint originals so that they can reproduce them. And yeah. he is. I am a huge nerd. I, he is an even huger nerd. Uh, I mean that. Oh. I, I mean that in a very endearing way. And he wrote this incredibly yeah. in-depth article about all the different oh, ways yeah. that you can photograph your art, starting with an iPhone, going all the way up to having it uh, go to a professional, doing it with your own DSLR. So we will include that in the show notes too. I would. I would just read that, and and that's how you. That's how you get it all. Started. What's your opinion on that? I mean. My opinion on it is the, and this is going to come from a marketer, and this will drive artists and photographers nuts. Uh, I would not, it, I wouldn't, let, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Do you know when you open a bank account? Yeah. When you have a check to deposit, not before. And that's, that's like the true marketer's way to do it. So Okay, so what you're saying is that I use my iPhone to start, and then when I start getting... Uh, exactly, when you start getting orders. come in, then mm -hmm. I upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Yep, the, 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 the biggest problem in today's day and age is getting the sale. The smallest problem is everything that happens after the sale, right? So okay. get, get the sales first, and then, and then you can worry. And you're like, look, you can say... I came to your site, Susan, I put in an order. You write me an email back. Hey, Patrick, how you doing? Thanks for the order, appreciate it so much. Uh, I could ship you one immediately, but I just wanted to let you know that I have a professional photographer coming and they're gonna photograph my work and I was gonna get it reproduced at a higher quality, so if you wouldn't mind waiting a couple of weeks, uh, I could do that. Is that okay with you, Patrick? And I'd say, yes, you know what, that's awesome. Then I would hang up and I would go and find that professional photographer and I would get that okay. piece photographed and then, and then off it goes. So that's what I Okay. Do. Okay, got it. So I think that's all my questions. Wonderful. Oh, how many in a limited edition? Oh, this is the beauty of art. It's it, everything is arbitrary. You can set it any which way you like. You can do five. You can do. I mean, and we've seen success with everything. I've seen success with two, with four, with six, with ten, with fifty, with a hundred, even with a thousand. So it 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 it, it okay. just there's there's no hard and, and fast that, rule there for everybody. Okay. Uh, that's it for today, Patrick. Wonderful, Susan. Thanks for the questions. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, okay. It looks like that's it on the hands. If you guys have questions, please do raise your hand. I'm, I'm here to answer them, but I've got a couple to handle in the chat. So I'm going to do that. So Abby says, I prefer the look of my current website versus the art storefront site. Can I just use the store to sell my products without changing my site or host? You love, you love your web server. I've been with them for over 20 years. Yeah, so what I would say, um, Abby, is how well is that site selling for you? How well is it selling? If it's not selling well, you need to get rid of it. Because your job is not to have the most beautiful looking site. Your job is to sell art, right? So, you know, the, and, and I sort of alluded to this earlier, but what is the best way to sell art? It's in person. What's the next best way? It's on your website because we have to have it. Our job with the website is to make the art buying experience as close as possible to the in-person buying experience. What does the in-person buying experience look like in retail? It would be in an art gallery. What do you notice about all art galleries? There is nothing but art on the wall and blank white walls and completely minimalist, right? It's all about the art. So our websites are set up to mimic as close as possible the experience when you walk into an art gallery. And we know by doing that, we're able to deliver sort of a, a higher conversion rate for our customers. So. Could you, if you did sign up, and we get, you know, we get this question all the time, um, you know, can I just use your marketing help and not, not get the website? The thing is, is that we have all of like the marketing literally built into the website itself. And let me, let me give you an example quickly, and this will, this will help punctuate it. Let's just say that your, your online store was um, the Apple store, right? We have uh, a proprietary uh, algorithm in, in Cookie that we wrote that on all of our customer sites, it, it's essentially like a little video camera sitting in the side of your online store, okay? And let's say Adele here in the middle walks into my store and she looks at one product, then she looks at another product, then she comes back and let's just say she looks at an iPhone or an Apple store. She looks at one iPhone and then she looks at another iPhone and then she looks at the iPads and then she looked at a Mac laptop and then came back and bought the iPhone. The system instantaneously is going to alert me. Alert me, and it's going to say, "Patrick, Adele just purchased an iPhone, but she looked at a Mac laptop and she looked at an iPad. Here's what the models are." Then the system automatically generates an email for you, and the email says, "Hey, Adele, thank you so much for your order on the iPhone. I really appreciate it. 
Uh, I noticed that you also were looking at the iPads and the Macs. And I was just wondering if you had any questions. If you did, sometimes we, we, we do combination sales where you might be able to get some more money off. And I can't remember what our exact language is. And all you have to do is just go, yep, looks good, hit send. Or if you want to put in a little personal note, you can do that and hit send. And so we have a whole bunch of features like that that are like literally built into the software that like underpin the website that you don't normally see. And so that's, that's a hugely important part of it. So that's what I would say. That's how I'd answer that question. Um, okay, going through the chat. Yes, Amy, you can sell anything on the website. You know, the reality is, is that, we, and we sort of figured this out early on, it's like, yes, we are um, set up, okay, for wall art, right? Everybody knows that, you can see that from all the features. But, 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 we're also just an e-commerce shopping cart, right? And if you're selling pottery, if you're selling jewelry, if you're selling sculpture, there's no website out there for you, sadly. There's no sculpture-specific product that I've seen. There's no jewelry-specific product, although there should be. I don't know why there would be. So you can use our web store, still benefit from the marketing, and it's not going to be any different than, excuse me, not going to be any different than it would be on any of the other shopping carts. So yes, and we have a ton of people that are doing that. So yeah, that happens all the time. Okay. Do you have stats on success rates for using your services? So this is, this is a great question. This is like the clog the drain question. Also, I'm not picking on you, Robert. What underpins this is where, is there some sort of guarantee or can I compare my beginning to someone else's middle or someone else's end? And you just can't, you absolutely just can't. There, there is every single type of result imaginable from people that are super struggling to people that are just knocking it out of the park different parts of the world, different media types. Uh, uh, sometimes some are hybrid. So there's a, just an, an entire mixed bag. So uh, trying to apply some sort of magical price point that's working the best for everybody or a magical size or some sort of magical conversion rate that works across the board is an utter and total fool's errand. There's just too much differenti differentiation uh, uh, in, in the market. So you, you, you can't compare like that. And there's absolutely no guarantee at all. Anyone that gives you a guarantee is selling snake oil. What we believe we have is the best system full stop on the web that helps artists and photographers get on that path to a six figure business. That's not saying much, we don't have any competition really. I mean, we're, it's, just, it's us versus like the basic shopping carts. So that's what I would say, um, yeah. Okay, Mike, you're gonna be up next and then I see the questions on YouTube and Facebook, I will answer those too. And if there's any other, uh, you can certainly put in the chat. Mike, you're up, go ahead. You probably have to unmute. I'll let you know yep. when I get it. Yep, you got it. Hey, Patrick. Um, I guess the, the question I have, and I, I tried to send an email um, before the holiday to you guys. No, the email is a black hole. I, they, they abuse my, they have art store friends. Uh, I'm formally filing an abuse complaint about how bad they use my email. I have like 27. I can't even like look at it. There's so many of them in there. So apologies if you sent it to me. So sorry. Uh, it didn't, but I, I would have liked to have sent yeah. it to you. But um, so this is the third or fourth time I've been on with you and I'm ready. But I don't, there's not like a button on the website that says I'm ready. Oh, it's just, it's the demo request. So did, have you put in a demo request already? I've done two demos with the same person um, in truth. You didn't answer my questions the way I needed them answered, okay. but you have in, um, in the last couple that I've been on. So I'm ready to go. I just I'll have, to know do you, okay, so the, put it this way. Do you want the same person to call you back or do you want me to have a new person call you back? I'd like a new person Done. to call me back. Done. We'll take care of it. April, will you add it to do um, new person to call back? And then let me find out who talked to my boy, Mike, and scold them because they didn't get the job done. Um, well, it, yeah. it, in honesty... I know it it's, it's hard some of my questions that I asked. Yeah. And he said, well, just do what Patrick said. Oh, well, I <laughs> uh, actually was, like that. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. So, um, that's my main reason to be on here today was just really to cut through some of this stuff so that I can get going. The second question is, is once I do that, how long does it take to, um, set up the website? So, Differs pending on your technical aptitude, okay? But um, we're going to push you to get it going in 14 days or less. And we've got like a really white glove service to get you there. And to be honest with you, for whatever reason, you know, and this is just like one of these unique things and also depressing for as hard as I work on the doggone marketing. If you look at the reviews on our Facebook page, all you'll see one after another, after another, after another 
is the people that are in the first two weeks. Like the, every review goes like, I just launched and I'm not live yet, but it's really great the support, right? And it's like all these different variations of that. And I'm just like, oh, where are the ones that I've been I've been on for six months, you know? And I'm kicking butt. But the re the reason is like our support is dynamite early on like you hit a wall you call them they get you unstuck we want you live in 14 days um we have like a bunch of training to put you through we put you through this huge website audit where we get some eyeballs and a workshop a zoom call like this where we break down your site look everything over make sure that you're not you know making any of the uh you know you're following best practices and then immediately into marketing and you have not a minute to wait q4 is coming q4 is coming we still got time you can gear up and then did you see Mike, did you see I did a piece yesterday? April, will you put this in the show notes? Critical, critical video, um, which is the minute you get in, I want you to figure out what you think your five, six best sellers are and immediately order the samples too. And we have like a killer deal running where you'll, you'll get like a special introductory pricing. You have to have two papers, okay? Preferably a photo paper. Well, are you a photographer or an artist? Photographer. Okay, so, you, and you might have them already. You need to have a photo paper, a fine art paper, okay? You need to have a canvas print, you need to have a metal print, and you need to have an acrylic print immediately. So when we teach you to get live, I need you to have those samples so that you can show them off and you can merchandise them, uh, which is gonna be critical too. But we'll, t we'll, we'll tell you all that. I'll have, um, I'll have somebody call you today. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome aboard, you're gonna be stoked. That your, timing, um, your timing is really, really good. Um, because Q4 is coming, and I, and I honestly, I don't know if you've heard me rant about that, but I think we're staring down the barrel of what's going to be the single solitary biggest Q4 in the history of selling art. I just do, um, and I, I can get into that in a little bit um, if you want. Joe, I love this question. So Joe, quick aside, sees what my background is, obviously knows I'm a huge fan of a particular team, and uh, yes, I think it's going to be a great year, Joe. I'm very excited, and I love that you know soccer. Um, Okay. Oh, yeah. And Mike, look on this Facebook comment from Deborah. I was live in fifty five in five days. I'm a sixty five year old art gal. Bam. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Um, yeah. So that's where we are. Okay. What other questions? Amy, I see this. I'll have somebody contact you today too. April, can you have somebody contact um, Amy Tomzak? Okay. Um, so Joe asked me, is there a minimum number of images you should have before launching? Yep. One. One. One is literally the, the, the rule of thumb. If you've got one, that's enough to go live. And then what happens is that every new image that you add ends up being a marketing moment uh, that you can get going with. So the, the, the one is the minimum. There's, there's like no magic number, right? Like if you've got 15 pieces, you're good to go. If you have 50, you're good to go too. Um, but you know, again, everyone stresses over like what it takes to get live and none of that matters. All that matters is like the, the getting marketing immediately um, and getting going on that. And if you do that, big, big deal. So big, big deal. That's what I would say. What other questions did I miss? Benjamin Heller saying, you always say the next step is to set up a demo if it's a good fit. In your experience, what artists are not a good fit? Thanks. So step one is, you know, and, and, and this is like a constant issue too, because people are always asking, uh, not always asking, but people always get discouraged early on if they haven't had any sales, okay? It's like, I've been at this for two months and I haven't had any sales, or I've been at this for six months and I haven't had any sales. And you have to have validated your art, okay? That is a dangerous, dangerous thing if you've not done it yet. When, what do I mean by validate your art? I mean specifically, sold your art to strangers. Stated another way, sold your art to people not named, mom, dad, brother, sister, and or best friends. If you've done that, you validated that you, you, you know, the, the, the market, you have a product that the market wants, okay? If you've not done that and you think that like we're gonna be able to help you do that and get there, that's, that's not a recipe for success. So you have to validate that what you're creating the market actually wants. And there's a whole lot of people that think they've done this and haven't done this. The good news is, is you know, six months ago or nine months ago now I would have said, okay, you know, let's say Ben, you haven't done that yet. And, and, and you would say, what's the best way to do that? I would say, get a booth next weekend at the farmer's market or at the local fair show or whatever you have in your town, sit up there, sit there with your pieces and see if it sells. That's the quickest way to validate and have conversations. And I've got posts and playbooks on that. Now, in, in, in this post COVID world, cell phone, go live. And I give this advice all the time, go live and give it a shot and see if your work will sell, okay? 
Um, just give it a shot, see how it goes. And it's been crazy. I, I you know, I, I said this today, and like we had an internal call. I have so what happens is that we have this private Facebook group, right? And inside the private Facebook group, we encourage people to post their small wins because we want everyone, A, we like the morale boost, B, we want everyone learning from what people are doing that like it really works, right? And I have never in my entire life seen this level of success as I have with the flash sales, the live art shows, going live on the socials and attempting to sell their art. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And you know, and aside from the artists that we're actually doing the fairs and circuits and got all those reps and sets really attempting to sell their own work. Most don't have the reps and sets. They just don't. They need to, uh, uh, they, they need the practice, right? Like you need to hold your piece up, talk about it, talk about what's great, talk about the media types. And these shows are forcing people to do it. And the lighting sucks, the audio sucks, the hair's a little frazzled, uh, they're super nervous. And all of it just comes across absolutely awesome. People loved it. People want to buy directly from the artist. Nobody wants to go through a middleman in today's day and age. So that's the quickest way to get validated. Um, if you've not done that yet, I highly recommend you do that. Um, love that, Mike. We'll definitely be talking about that on the inside. Uh, I'm a complete soccer nut. Okay. Um, I see that question about social media. Courtney's asking, a few weeks ago, you guys mentioned you'd be adding new products and merchandise for Q4. So... I'm not gonna put the date out there, but it's very close. We're integrating with a company called Guten, and so all the swag, uh, that whole, well, a whole bunch of them early on, you know, coffee table books, the mugs. I don't know if they're gonna do shirts or scarves or masks or what else. I don't really like the, the, the you know, the knick-knacky stuff personally. It's personal opinion, um, but yes, we are integrated with them, and that's gonna happen quickly. Um, Dorothy asks, how many pieces do you need to be validated? You know, I, I if it was me, I would do like five to seven, right? But you know, if, if you're telling me that you went to a show or you opened up your garage because you live on a busy street and you put all the art out there and you sold a piece for five thousand dollars, I'd say, okay, you're probably validated. So, the key is that you have a product the market wants. You know, that's 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 what's so important. Barbara asks, how do you suggest increasing the number of people who I reach on social media? Ooh, that's a good one. There's, there's a whole bunch of ways. I mean, uh, we spell out the marketing all year long, what to do, when to do it, how to post on the socials, how to send emails, how to, have, how, to, how to run sales, how to execute on that, how to go live, how to have the flash sales. And it's not any one thing. It's all of it and doing it consistently. There's, there's no secret to it. It's just doing the right stuff and then doing it consistently. Um, all right, Joe asked, people who want to buy art from the artist, I've heard that they also want things that are hand signed. How do you square that with the drop shipping? Wonderful question. So what I recommend doing is you have a price for your prints, and then you have another price for your prints that are hand signed. You get the thing shipped to you. It all comes beautifully bubble wrapped, amazing. You unseal it, pull it out, sign it, right back into the same packaging, new label, off you go. But you get compensated for your time in doing so. And so that's what our a lot of our best sellers do. Um, or you could do the digital signature if you want to too, but I really like the concept of you know having that extra la level layer of value in there, um, you know, and 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 then getting paid for it because everyone's like, ah, do I want it hand signed? Eh. Or it's like, yeah, I do, and if I do, I get it. I'll I'll pay I'll pay more for it. So that's the best way to handle that. Um, Amy asked, do you help with pricing? Oh boy, do we? Um, yeah, we do. We have a like a recommended uh, markup set, which I think is 250%, and that's pretty much just set globally by default for you um, relative to your costs. But we also advise on pricing quite a bit, and this is like a massive hot button topic. April, will you grab the Art Business Mornings on discounting? Just did a huge rant on this on discounting, okay? God, I just got burps today. Excuse me. Discounting art, massive hot button topic, okay? What does is, what is everyone normally hear out there uh, uh, in the landscape? Do not discount your work. It will cheapen it. It will cheapen it in the eyes of your consumer. Do not ever do that. Those people that are saying that have never sold anything in their entire lives. I know of two brands that never discount, okay? Let's just list those out. One, Lois Vitton, okay? Louis Vuitton. They don't. You know who else doesn't? Tiffany's. Tiffany's doesn't. Is your art or your brand so awesome that you're putting yourself on the Louis Vuitton level or the Tiffany's level? Then get off the call and get out of here. You've got it all figured out, right? Like everyone discounts. 
humans, it turns out, need incentives to take action. What does a sale have? Two incentives. One, the discount. Two, the scarcity. This thing is going to end on Friday at midnight. You put those two things together and you're capable of selling things. That's number one. Number two, uh, the higher price point your art is at, the more the negotiation goes on. High net worth people never pay retail for anything. That's how they got there in the first place. <laughs> or Nick, our CEO, says, the only high net worth individual that pay retail are the ones that are in the inheritance business, okay? Everyone else is negotiating like crazy all the time. So I like pricing, why do I go on that rant? I like pricing high so that I can come down to get a buying commitment. And I would say, there's Adele, I would say, hey Adele, I see you're interested in this piece. I normally sell this piece for a thousand bucks, but it's on sale today for 750 bucks. Well, here's the thing, you gotta take it today. Are you willing to take it today, Adele? She nods her head, I said, done, sold, right? And let's say I wanted to sell it at 750 the entire time. That was my idea. So what do I do? I price it at 1,000, then I immediately come down, have a little negotiation. People love getting a deal. It's just such an important part of sales, period. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I get fired up on the, on, the, on the discounting. But Nick, the CEO, and I did this whole rant on it, so I'm gonna send you that one. It'll, it'll, it'll email you this automatically um, as soon as this thing's done. And I'll also send you the one, so discounting, and then also the one on merchandising. Oh, merchandising is so important. It's so important. So, okay. Hopefully that answers the pricing. Um, validation. I, oh, I love this. I have a large backlog of great paintings that I have exhibited in galleries but not sold. How can I market them? Woo I love this one. So... You know, one of the things that I love about my job is, you know, I'm a hardcore tactical marketer, okay? I'm not a guru. I'm not reading someone else's technique on Twitter, buying someone else's courses, okay? My fingernails are in the dirt day in, day out, and I'm figuring things out in a pretty robust clip as a result of it. So we have a customer, okay? Name's Matthew Laka, and ooh, this is how, this is how cool I can do this because I'm already dialed in on Zoom. Sorry, Chelsea, I'm gonna have to switch up the background. So this will just give you the case in point, okay? This is his new work, right? His new work is really good. He sold this one for a ton of money. And by the way, he sold this one for a ton of money in a gallery in which the guy tried to negotiate 30% off, but I digress. So he had a ton of excess inventory, okay? Literally in his basement. Uh, he lives in Canada, I live in California. You can't have a basement in California, so he's got one. And he started running basement sales, okay? Now obviously I helped him, I was testing the idea um, and I think he ran two of them in 15 days. And I should say, it's not all, there's always other circumstances, right? Like if anyone's on this call, I at least hope you know that I have integrity because I'm not gonna BS you and tell you like, he made, the, he made this amount of money just because he turned the thing on and started selling. This is a guy that's been marketing hardcore for eight to 10 years, has good social followings, uh, uh, has these big shows. Like this show behind me, he sold $110,000 Canadian in the one gallery show that he had, okay? So his price points are high. They're like 10, 15, 20, $25,000. But, and I'm gonna queue up the screen share here, so just let me show you so I can show you guys live, as you think I'm kidding. This concept of a basement sale, okay, for whatever reason, taps in deep to our like, you know, unspoken desire to pull over when we see a sign that says garage sale right? Because there's, some, there's something about it, like it goes back to our treasure hunt days when we were a kid. Like, ooh, I don't know what could be there. I don't know what could be there. So let me show you. So this was the basement sale that he ran, okay? And I got to move this thing out of the way so I can, oh shoot, hold on. Just bear with me. And so it's a live art show. You can see there's numbers and you can see he's holding up works. Now, obviously, like, look at this thing. He did this 10 years ago. I mean, if you, if you look at my Zoom background, like look at how, I mean, look at the crazy portraiture he did. So not saying these pieces aren't awesome, but this is stuff he did a while ago, right? And it was all, uh, you know, under the auspices, basement sale number three, you can see the birds, okay? It was all excess inventory he had in his basement, okay? He is asking to take orders live on the fly. If they're watching it on Instagram, they can leave him an Instagram message, send him a DM. Uh, if they have his email, they can respond to email. If they saw it on Facebook, they could leave a comment on Facebook and said, I want it. They got put into the queue first, okay? He sold in 15 days, 62 pieces for a little bit over 17,000 Canadian. 
all on excess inventory, all doing exactly what I'm talking about with these live art shows. And it is absolutely the future. He didn't leave his garage studio. He cleared out a ton of stuff. And then his life was literally held for about three weeks because he had to box and shift it all up. And I told him not to do that. I told him to hire somebody on Craigslist, but he didn't listen to me on that one. So that's exactly what I would do. If you have that excess, excess inventory, boom, there you go. There you go, right? Now, um, Tom Bailey, if the prices are automatically shown on your website, how would I negotiate during the sales process? So if it's a website sale, you know, you do the same, we advise you do the same thing that pretty much every e-commerce brand in the world does. You hit the store before you can even do anything. You're whacked with that annoying thing that says 20% off your first order, right? And must, you know, like expires in 48 hours or whatever it is. I can't remember what the language is on ours. It's right the fact I wrote it. So that is what you would get. That's what you would see. And that's how you're going to do it. So you price a little bit higher. They get a 20% off coupon. They order. Boom. So hopefully that answers it. I think I had a few more questions on. Let me see. No, I think that's it. I'm going back to the chat. If there's anyone else, raise your hand. I would love to get in it. I think that's it up top. Yeah, that's it up top. Does Pinterest work in your strategy? Oh, no, I, th I think I answered that. Um, does Pinterest work in your strategy? Absolutely not, Angelina. Don't do it. Waste of time. Do not do it. Waste of time. I'm not saying that there's not an artist out there that's figured out how to make Pinterest pay, but I've yet to see one is, is the question. Um, so that's what I would say. Yeah, Amy, you too. Like, you know, the minute the minute you come in, one of the one of the coolest things that we do as a company is that we, like I said, like there's there's such a difference, okay, between people that actually do something and can teach it with authority versus all the BS crap guru marketing people out there, right? Like, I know how to teach a live art show because I go live on Facebook and Instagram five and six days a week. Why do I do that? Because I like being on video? No, I hate it, okay? Pre-pandemic, I never went on video once, okay? I was happy to never be seen, be anonymous. But I saw the writing on the wall, I started executing, I continue executing all the time. Uh, you know, I'm in, I, when, I, when, when you're live like two to three days, two, two to three times a day, six to seven days a week, you learn some things, you get good at some things, and then you start running the same things with your customers, and then you get some more success, and then you build a playbook. So Amy, when you come aboard, you have this excess art, there is a playbook that walks you through every step from top to bottom, how you do it, what social platforms to go live on, which one should you do first, how do you use your phone, how do you use your computer, how do you test with the bandwidth, what about lighting, what about audio, how do you warm up your audience, what do you do after the fact, every single solitary thing is accounted for. And you know I know what I'm talking about because I'm doing it every single solitary day. No one can call BS on me. So that's the, that's the joy of being in the dirt, um, you know, actually having your fingernails in there working on stuff rather than just talking about it. So that's what I would say on that one. But it's exciting, you guys. This whole, this whole selling live and direct is so exciting. And you know what I would say, too, is that you are essentially, and I said this in the last call. Maybe I came up with it on the last call. I don't know. With this, with this live video component to selling art and photography, you're essentially taking your offline gallery, you're putting it online on Main Street USA of the interwebs, okay? And every time that you do a live broadcast, the doors are open, anyone can come in. So it stands to reason you should be doing as many live broadcasts as possible because all it's doing is keeping your gallery open. People can come in, they can ask questions, they can get to know you, they can bond, all of that stuff. So that's what I would say. Sean, I don't know if I totally understand that. Is it a good idea to frame your art paintings in advance? I did that, but I chose very basic frames. How about photography? No, I get that one. I get that one. So framing is interesting, right? And you know, I love the concept of framing and showing framed art because it's the finished product, and you want people to see the finished product on the wall. That being said, it really comes down to media types, right? Like canvas, you don't necessarily need a frame. Acrylic, you don't necessarily need a frame. In fact, I might as well do this live because this is why I have these things. Give me one sec. Okay, I apologize that my green screen's up, so some of these things are gonna look a little bit wonky, so you just have to bear with me. So you could show a fine art paper with a frame, right? Because it's a little bit harder to show a fine art paper, but you can show it, see what it looks like, ready to hang, nice little things here to keep it 
hanging flat and not scratch your wall. Photo paper, same thing. Helps to have these things small, by the way, when you're doing video. So there's a simple black frame, right? And you can just talk about it. Um, and before I go through the rest of them, when I talk about the rest of them, what I would say in terms of the framing, millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, okay, have been spent on trying to figure out how to best incorporate framing and online sales together. I don't think anyone's cracked it. I don't think anyone's ever gonna crack it. It's too hard, frames are too expensive, people's tastes vary too wildly. So I like showing frames on the website because we're visual creatures and it helps us visualize our product on their wall and I think that's important, but that's it. That's as far as my advice goes with our customers. Yes, we have the ability to offer framing, but unless you're someone that says like, I picked the frame, Okay, because it's part of my artistic vision of what this looks like and I only want you to use this frame. I don't want you touching framing with a 10 foot pole. It's just too fraught with disaster to even get into. Some people do okay with it, but big picture, no. So that's what I would say. Anyway, wood print, no frame, ready to hang, ready to go. And this, is, this is what's awesome about photography. Metal, ready to hang, no frame, no need. Canvas, ready to hang, no frame, although you could use one. My personal favorite, acrylic, ready to hang, no frame needed. So in photography, you're really, you're really, really covered. Um, but boom, I've got all my media types here on the floor, ready to show, ready to merchandise. I could turn my phone on the minute this is over, have a live art show, and be able to show every sample type of that. Imagine. So that's what I got. Do you have live broadcast suggestions coaching? Yes. Yes, Adele, we do. Week in, week out, teach it all the time. Um, our customers are doing them all the time. Everybody's doing them all the time. Um, I'm live, like I said, five to six days a week. Morning shows, afternoon shows, all sorts of things. It's, it's just the future. It's absolutely the future. I believe it is an elevator. The doors are closing on the ground floor. It's that new. How high it goes up, I don't know, but I think it's extremely, extremely high. I'm usually really, if I have like one talent in life, I don't have many. It's spotting something that I know is going to be the next big thing and then getting there way ahead of anyone else and then being so far ahead that it never really materializes and then leaving and then everyone gets there. You know, it's like the pioneers and the, and the settlers. The pioneers take the arrows and the settlers come in and live on the land. I'm always the pioneer and I get the arrow and then I move on. But this is the next big thing. And, it, and, 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 I, and I say that understanding full well how stupid it is and arrogant it is to say that. But I can say this one with confidence. The fact that you can be anywhere and communicate, sell directly, talk about things. And, and, and also too, like, it's interesting, for whatever reason, China is ahead of us in certain things, okay? It's ahead of us in bots because the language is so difficult. What do I mean? Your dry cleaner, the local food place, they don't even have websites, okay? They build the whole website in a bot because they come with a phone, it's all in the little chat bot, there's the menu, there's everything else, you order it, you pay right in the phone and it's done, okay? That's the future here too, but it's gonna take a lot longer because English is easier to type than Mandarin. China's also ahead of us in the fact that live commerce over there, by which I mean you come into the store and if it's closed, they'll show you the shoes. Live broadcast one-on-one, -on -one, hold them up, talk about them, do all of these things, have the experience with you. Plants, same thing, like in China, it's exploding across the board and for whatever reason, they're ahead of us. It's going to be the norm here too. It's absolutely gonna be the norm here too. And some of my artists that are selling better than anyone else, anyone else, the majority of their sales, especially the high ticket ones, always come with some sort of personal interaction. Usually it's a phone call, emails back and forth. Well, guess what? The live video one-on-one -on -one suffocates all of that correspondence. You're done in one session usually, right? So there's just, there's a million different things about it, let alone what, what the um, content marketing uh, opportunities it generates by doing it. Like try writing a, a blog post versus turning this on for 15 seconds and talking. You know what's easier turning this on for 15 seconds and talking is writing the blog post, doing all the rest of it. It's amazing. The video content is just amazing. So that's what I would say. Uh, can collectors I know in Germany buy prints of my paintings that would be printed there? No, we don't have a print shop in Germany yet. Uh, we do have one here in the US. The advantage, um, Barbara, of the printers that we choose is they're both I don't know what they're doing. They're both doing like 50 to $60 million a year in total sales as such. They get those rates with FedEx and what's the one uh, DHL that no one else can get. So you're gonna pay the, ch the, the cheapest shipping cost possible uh, on those prints going out. 
But you know, if you sold a ton in Germany, you could potentially contact a printer in Germany. And when you get the orders that want to get shipped to Germany, you could just have those printed in Germany, send them directly to the printer and have them print them. So that's an option too. But I wouldn't stress about it. Like the rates, the rates that Bay Photo and, and the rates that Graphic Dimensions get, like it's like 50% off of what you would get when you try to go into a FedEx or a DHL or whatever else. Um, Diana Waters asks, what does your service cost? So what we do is we do what's called a membership fee, which gets you in and gets you access to all the marketing, these live sessions that we do with our customers twice a week, all of the support and stuff that we do. And then we charge a monthly fee. There's a couple of different plans. The monthly fee, I think, on the cheap is $59 a month or $49 a month. I don't even know, to be honest with you. If you're, if you're interested, request a demo. Um, April can put that link in there. On the demo, by the way, before they schedule that and give you like the whole, like, I think it's like 45 minutes to an hour drive through of all the software and all the features that we didn't cover, they'll have a 10 minute call with you. And you can ask all the questions, the pricing, all the rest of those details that I would quote, but I don't know the details like they do and I don't wanna mess them up. Um, and if you don't want them to call you again, they'll never call you again after that. We're not, we're not in the harassment business. So that's what I would say. Um, but is that it? Any final questions? I think that covered it. Thanks for the information. Thanks, Robert. Yep, Amy, don't worry. Go feed the horses. We'll, we'll make sure you get contacted. Okay, I think we will leave it there. Thanks, uh, thanks for the time, guys. That was, that was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully my rants didn't bore you too much. And like I said, all the links, all the, all the nifty stuff that I mentioned will go into the show notes. You'll get emailed it automatically, and you can click on the links. But definitely check out the video. Okay, it's, it's not that long. It's like 15 minutes on merchandising. Very important, how important it is and then discounting, and then the live art shows. April, make sure the live art show one's in there too. But thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day.